This broadcast is brought to you by the British Israel Church of God. The Watchman Program. Evangelist and commentator Peter Salemi. Bringing you the truth about today's world news in the light of Bible prophecy. And greetings, friends. I've gotten a lot of emails from people asking me about who I am and about our organization, the British Israel Church of God, and people want to know about who we are, what we believe in, where we came from. So I thought I'd sit back today on, on today's program, just sit back, talk with you, and tell you a little bit about me and Kurt and Bill, the three of us who have been working in this organization called the British Israel Church of God, tell you about what we're trying to do and what our, what our future plans are, God willing, if God lets it happen. First, uh, about me, my name again is Peter Salemi, and uh, I grew up in a typical Italian immigrant home. Uh, my parents came from Sicily to here in the 1960s. I was born in 1969, and I have a brother, and I also have a sister, and of course we grew up Catholic. Now I always believed in God. Uh, there was no question in my mind about God, but I was ignorant. I didn't really know much about my Catholic faith. I didn't read the Bible at all. But then there came a time when I was a kid, I was about 12 years old, this was 1982 or something like that, and uh, it was a Saturday afternoon, my parents went out, I had the house to myself, and I was watching television, and all of a sudden, a program came on called The World Tomorrow with Herbert W. Armstrong. So I was watching this program, and I started watching it every week. And I remember one program where I believe this was one of the first seeds that God planted in my mind. I remember Herbert Armstrong came on television and he said that not eating meat on Friday is not in the Bible. Now that caught me by surprise because I was a Catholic and I remember my mom telling me on Good Friday, it used to be every Friday, but especially on Good Friday, we do not eat meat because Jesus died on the cross. Herbert Armstrong comes on television and he says that that's not in the Bible. And it kind of hit me, but you know what? I just believed it. I accepted what he said and I believed it. So then I remember after that, I started eating meat on Good Friday. I remember I was at a cousin of mine's house. It was Good Friday. We had no school and I was eating meat. And my cousin just freaked out on me. What are you doing? You can't eat meat on Friday, on Good Friday. And I said, it's not in the Bible. Look it up for yourself. Even though I didn't even look it up. But he said, I said, look it up for yourself. And so I just believed it. So that's one of the seeds that I recall uh, God planting in my mind. But then after that, I didn't think much of it. So after that, I was in my teens. And I did what every other teen did you know, during that time, you know, going to school, trying to pick up as many girls as you can, uh, going out on weekends with your friends and getting stupid. I was doing all of that, but at the same time, because of this seed that was planted in my mind, I was still picking up Plain Truth magazines because at that time they had newsstands at plazas, at malls, and I always pick up a magazine every month and I would even order some literature. And I read the literature at that time. And I was kind of reading the Bible when I could. But I really still didn't understand it. But then, during my late teens, 18, 19, and I was dating my girlfriend who became my wife, Cora. I was dating her. And I was watching television. And at that time, I started to get serious about my faith. And I started to get curious about the Bible and what it really said. And I was watching 
many evangelists at that time, I was watching Jack Van Impey every week. I was watching uh, This Week in Bible Prophecy. I remember them by Paul Leland. But I was also watching Garner Ted Armstrong. And he stood out among all the rest of them when it came to especially prophecy and the way he spoke and the way he presented himself. And I was watching him one day. I remember saying to myself, this guy looks familiar. So I ran up to my closet and I pulled out the old worldwide Church of God literature that I used to get when I was 13, 14, 15. And I was going through some of the booklets and I saw a picture of Herbert Armstrong. Now at this time, this was 1988, Herbert Armstrong was long since dead and I didn't watch The World Tomorrow, but I started to in 88, 89. But at that time there was Richard Ames and, and other people. Herbert Armstrong wasn't on it, but I was looked at his picture and I saw Armstrong. And I said to myself, these guys look familiar. Obviously they're related, of course, they're father and son. And I put the two together, Worldwide Church of God, Church of God International, and I'm like, well, all right then. You know, the beliefs are similar. So I continue to watch Ted Armstrong. And at that time, I was watching his program, and I started to really study the Bible in depth. And I hit the libraries, and I started reading history books, religious books, encyclopedias, you name it. And I started buying books at Protestant bookstores. If you see my library, I mean, I, I have no more room for it in, in my house, in my basement. My library is just full, and I started going to Seventh-day Adventist bookstores and Catholic bookstores, and I started really looking into the Bible, and I came to the point where I said, Ted Armstrong is the one who is proclaiming the truth. Out of all the other evangelists, he was the one that was preaching the truth of the Bible. So I went to a personal appearance campaign. I, I because I was receiving a lot of literature from the Church of God International. And one time I asked them, is Ted Armstrong ever going to come to Toronto for a personal appearance campaign? And eventually he did. And he came to, the, to Toronto at a hotel near the airport. And at that time, uh, there was, I think, 700 people showed up. It was just a packed house. And I went there. And at that time, I was attending the Church of God International for about a month or so. So I was new into the church. And then I decided in 1992 to get baptized. So I became baptized and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Baptized, accepting His sacrifice, as Romans, the sixth chapter says. When I got baptized, I accepted His sacrifice for my sins and washed away my sins and all my sins were gone and God says I won't remember them anymore and it was just a huge burden that was lifted off of me because of the sins that I have committed in the past and I was a new man I was a new person I was a new creature in Christ and then I received the Holy Spirit and I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me just like everybody else that receives the Holy Spirit I'm not saying I'm special or anything like that. Everybody else that has received the Holy Spirit, they uh, experience the same thing that I've experienced. I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me and my mind after that just opened up because I realized I was a begotten child of God, that God is growing. His grace, His knowledge was growing inside of me and I kept the Holy Spirit I just kept feeding it with the words of the Bible, and, and, and the Bible just opened up to me. And I started to understand many, many truths of the Bible when I received the Holy Spirit, and it was the most wonderful time that I've ever experienced in my life. So I attended the Church of God International between 1992 and 1997 when it broke up. That organization broke up because of the internal problems at head office and so on. And I'm not going to get into that. So after 1997, I stopped going to church. And for a while there, I wasn't really practicing my faith. I was praying. 
I was reading the Bible, but I kind of started to drift away. But then, in around 1999, I came to the decision that I have to start practicing my faith again the, the way I once did when I was with CGI. And at that time, the internet started to come and started to be started to grow and people started to go on the internet so I decided all right I'm gonna start a website and I'm gonna start writing some booklets because I dealt deep into study I I have a list on our website there's an article said it that's titled who is Peter Salemi I just listed listed some of the literature that I have read throughout the years so I started writing literature and I began to study in depth once again and hitting the libraries again and studying more and reading more political works religious works historical works and I started writing and then I started broadcasting on internet radio now before I get into that before that during 1992 to 97 Bill Pitsinas our VP was also attending CGI with me. We were friends, we've been friends since high school, and uh, as I started getting into the faith, he asked me one time, we were in a coffee shop and I had the Bible with me, he says, what's that? And he says, well, and, and I said, well, that's the Bible. He says, you read the Bible? I said, yeah, and I started telling him about my faith. And then he, God started working with him, and then eventually, we went to CGI together, and eventually he got baptized as well. But then after 1997, we stopped going to CGI, and we kind of drifted apart a little bit. But then in 1999, I started the website, went into internet radio, started preaching the gospel on internet radio, and I was doing it for a while, but then I ran out of funds. I got laid off from my job, funds started to run dry, and I was going to stop the website, stop the internet radio broadcast. And on the last broadcast, when I said goodbye to everyone, because I was getting several hundred people at the time, the internet was fairly new, but I was getting several hundred people a day listening to my program. As I was saying bye to everyone, and I did the last broadcast, Right after that, I got an email from a person called Kurt Winkle, who is the executive distributor who distributes all of our literature throughout the United States and Canada. He asked me, he said, Peter, why are you shutting down the broadcast? And I said, I ran out of funds. And he said, well, if, uh, when you get back on your feet, I'll stake you while you get back on your feet and that way you can continue to, uh, to do the program. And I remember before that, I prayed to God. I said, God, please help me. Please send someone to help me. Like Jeremiah, when he was asking for help to do his work, and God sent him Baruch. Well, God sent me Kurt Winkle, and he staked me till I got back on my feet. And because of him, the work continued. God sent me Kurt, and the work continued. And because of him, the work is still here today. And I've thanked him a thousand times for what he did. And I'll thank him now, right now on the camera. Thank you, Kurt, for everything you've done and everything that you continue to do for this work. So, Kurt saved us. God saved us through Kurt. And we continued the work. We continued the internet radio broadcast. Then I started doing videos on the website. We started uploading the videos to our website before YouTube came around. I think YouTube came around in 19 or 2005. But I, we didn't get an account until 2011. But during those early years, after Kurt came, I started seeing Bill again, and I started telling him about what we were doing with the website about how I started a website and and uh, started writing material and everything and he said well I want to come on board as well and now he's our VP here so 
basically, the British Israel Church of God consists of myself, and I write the booklets, I do the video broadcasts, used to, and, and the radio broadcasts, and I used to do the internet radio broadcasts, so I do that, I do the, I write the booklets, and broadcast, and of course I also do the website, I created the website, I also do the video editing on, on, the, uh, on the Watchman program, I do all the video editing, and of course I also do the radio programs and do the editing on the radio programs as well. Bill, he takes care of the other things like speaking to the media to get us airtime, he talks and tries to get sponsors, he gathers all the news items, does the commercials for the Watchman program, and he also funds a lot of what we're doing as well as I fund a lot of what we're doing here as well. And Kurt, he distributes the booklets all over the, all over the United States and Canada, and he also runs a Facebook page to advertise the British Israel Church of God, and he, of course, also funds a lot of what we are doing as well. So that's basically... Uh, the organization is Bill, Kurt, and I. That's basically what our functions are. And uh, so far, everything is just running like clockwork, and we are growing, and our audience is growing, and we thank God every day for uh, what He has given us so far. And I, God willing, we continue to grow. Now, when I come back, I'll talk about some of our beliefs and what we want to accomplish with the British Israel Church of God, this organization. If you want to know more, if you want to inquire more, Bill Pizzinas will give you the addresses and phone numbers where you can inquire more about our organization. To download your free literature, log on to our website at www.britishisrael.ca. If you want to write, call, or text for more information, our address is the British Israel Church of God, P.O. Box 30043, Brooklyn Town Center, Whitby, Ontario, Canada. Postal code is L1MOB5. Our USA address is 171 West Barbara Avenue, Parump, Nevada, USA. Postal code 89060. If you want to reach us by telephone, Call or text at 905-447-4415 or 416-898-7407. Are we a cult? A lot of people claim that because you are a Sabbath keeper, that your church keeps the laws of God, that your church is non-Trinitarian, that we reject Christmas, Easter, we reject the Trinity, that we believe that we should keep the laws of God, many people will turn around and call you a cult. Are we a cult? Or do we believe in Jesus Christ and follow Jesus Christ and are Christian? Now I want to read you the definition of a cult from Webster's Dictionary. And it basically says this, defining what a cult is. It says, formal religious veneration, worship, a system of religious beliefs, and ritual. Also, its body of adherence, and that's under the article cult. Now, if that's the case, well then, everyone's a cult. Every religion, Catholics, Protestants, Seventh-day Adventists, Church of God, Seventh-day, Buddhists, uh, Hindus, they're all cults, according to this definition. But, of course, the definition of a cult has evolved, and, of course, especially because of Walter Martin and his book, The Kingdom of the Cults, that he wrote back in the 60s, the definition has changed, and the definition goes something like this. This is from the Encyclopedia Handbook of Cults in America, page 5. It says, For those belonging to the movement, all religious groups claiming to be Christian, but deemed outside of Christian orthodoxy, were considered cults. Christian cults are new religious movements which have a Christian background, but are considered to be theologically deviant by members of other Christian churches. In his influential book, The Kingdom of the Cults, 
Christian scholar Walt, Walter Martin defines Christian cults as groups that follow the personal interpretation of an individual rather than the understanding of the Bible accepted by mainstream Christianity. So if you don't accept the mainstream orthodox view of Christianity, you are a cult and following some guy's personal interpretation of the Bible. Now we never say that. We say don't believe me, me believe what your Bible says. We say that the Bible interprets its own, its own symbols. The Bible is its own commentary. Follow the Bible, we always say. People say, Pete, that's your interpretation of the Bible. Absolutely not. I have no interpretation. The Bible speaks to us, not us putting our ideas into it. I say it over and over again on the program. But let's go through some of Orthodox Christianity's beliefs and see if, and let's see who the real cult is, according to the definition of Walter Martin. The immortality of the soul. Now I'm going to list all these and we can prove all this from our vast library of literature that you can see, that you can read off our website at BritishIsrael.ca. The immortality of the soul. Not in the Bible, yet it's part of orthodox belief. Everlasting life in hell and heaven. Well, that's not in the Bible, but it's part of orthodox belief. God's law is done away. You can't find that in the Bible, but it's part of Christian orthodoxy. Uh, the Trinity, that's a big one. A lot of people claim that if you don't believe in the Trinity, basically you cannot be saved and enter into the kingdom of God. But the Trinity is not in the Bible, yet it's part of orthodox Christianity. The Rapture, Sunday worship, Christmas, Easter, not in the Bible, but part of orthodox Christianity. The Holy Spirit, a person, not in the Bible. The Jews are all Israel, not in the Bible, but part of Orthodox Christianity. Now it's amazing, all these main doctrines are not in the Bible, and they turn around and call other people a cult because they don't believe what they believe. Now us, the churches of God, Many of our doctrines that we talk about, the Sabbath is in the Bible, the feast days are in the Bible, keeping God's law is in the Bible, God is a family in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is God's power, God's mind in the Bible. Everything that we preach and teach, we substantiate it from the Scriptures. And we're the cult. That reminds me of what Dinesh D'Souza wrote in his book, The Big Lie, which I urge everyone to pick up. Excellent book of, about what's going on in politics today. And he talks about something called transference in page one of this book. He talks about transference and he says, transference in its wrongful assignment of blame and responsibility is obviously a form of lying. And these are people that shift the blame from themselves to another person. They play the victim card. It says here, blaming the victim, or sorry, normally lying is a distortion of the truth. This applies to transference in the general sense of the term. He says, exchanging places. The bad guy becomes a good guy, and the good guy becomes a bad guy. This is more than a distortion of the truth. It is an absolute inversion of it. It's a big, big lie. Then a little later on, he says in page 3, through a process of transference, leftists blame their victims for being and doing what they themselves are and do. In a, sick, in a sick inversion, the real fascists in American politics masquerade as anti-fascists and accuse the real anti-fascists of being the fascists. Now that sounds familiar when you look at this. Walter Martin and others claim that if you don't believe in Orthodox Christianity, you are a cult. Telling the churches of God, you are a cult. Yet the churches of God, everything they believe is in the Bible. Transference, when you look at all the doctrines of Orthodox Christianity, they are following the personal interpretations of men and not God. And a lot of these things are not in the Bible. Everything that the churches of God believe, you can substantiate from the scriptures. 
Who is the real cult? The real cult is calling the churches of God a cult, yet the churches of God, they're not the cult. They believe in following Jesus Christ, following God the Father. They are the real Christians. They have the Holy Spirit inside them, inside of them. That's the definition of a Christian. And the evidence of that is keeping the commandments of God, as it says in the Bible. And so, the Orthodox mainstream Christians, they're the real cult, not the churches of God. That is a typical example of transference. All right. So what do we believe? We believe in the Sabbath, the holy days, that God is a family consisting of the Father and the Son, that man has the potential to become the same kind as the Father and the Son, the purpose of human life. Uh, and no, I am not like some of these other churches of God that have fallen away to a certain extent. I will never come on here and claim that I am an apostle. I am not an apostle. I'm not, uh, I don't uh, claim divine titles for myself. I'm not that prophet. I'm not a prophet. I'm not anything like that. I'm not Joshua. I'm not uh, Zerubbabel or anything like this. I am just an evangelist, a commentator, as Bill Pizzina says in the intro all the time, evangelist and commentator, Peter Salemi. An evangelist is one who preaches the gospel. And so, that's what I am. I just come on here, preach the gospel, which consists of the gospel of salvation, 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, read verses 1 through about 6, talking about the life, the teachings of Jesus Christ, and what He did for us on the cross, and saved us from our sins, and so on. That is one aspect of the gospel. Then the other aspect of the gospel is Mark the first chapter, verse 14, where Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. So we preach the good news, that's what gospel is, the good news of the coming kingdom of God. So we talk about the kingdom of God and what is it and how we can get into it. I spoke about, I spoke earlier about uh, being born again, that we must be born to get into the kingdom or the family of God. What is the kingdom of God? Well, it's the family of God ruling down here on this earth and ruling this earth for a thousand years. And it's something that we must be born into. And we got a lot of literature on that on BritishIsrael.ca. And also, we do not claim to be the one true church. That there is one church, but there are many branches. And those branches could be under any type of name. It could be the Living Church of God, the United Church of God, Church of God International. As long as they are keeping the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Spirit inside of them, they are part of the Church of God and are branches of the one true church. But we don't believe we are the one true church. And outside of this organization, there is no other church. That's just a lot of nonsense. Jesus said plainly here, in John the 15th chapter, verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branch as plural. One vine, that's Jesus, and we are all attached to that vine. And of course, we are attached to the vine through the Holy Spirit. Even in John, or 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 12, the Apostle Paul says this, For as the body is one, the body being the church of God, one church, as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many, are one body, so is also Christ. So, it is one body, it is one church, but there are many members, many branches, and many times we don't even know who these people are. So, that's what we believe about the one true church. There's one body, one church, many members, many branches, and we're all attached to the vine, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the Holy Spirit. And how do we know that people in the Church of God have the Holy Spirit? Because they keep the commandments of God. The love of God is shed abroad on our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Romans, the fifth chapter and verse five. 
Now, what future plans do we have for the British Israel Church of God and British Israel media? Well, what we want to do, we want to take this to the next level when it comes to broadcasting and news media. We want to have a setup kind of like if you're familiar with rebel.media, that's on YouTube, that's on the internet, or also Alex Jones. Now, I'm not saying we're like Alex Jones. We don't deal in conspiracy theories and anything like that. But just the way he has it set up, where he has a studio, a headquarters, and he has uh, news reporters fanned out all over the place, reporting news and sending it into them, and then broadcasting live to millions of people, and broadcasting live news, and of course we will broadcast, we want to broadcast live news, and, and of course apply it to Bible prophecy, to do the witness and warning to the nations. And you see Rebel Media has the same type of setup as Alex Jones, and I feel that that is a great setup to have for us here, and this is why I started the website called British Israel, or B-I-C-O-G Media, to have a media website, to have a live broadcast, to have people uh, broadcasting live and wherever they are, the news, and we bring it into the headquarters and broadcast it live on uh, the BICOG Media website. So that's basically what our, the, how we want to take this to the next level. And of course, continue doing Watchman programs and try and buy up airtime. We were negotiating some airtime with some of the big Christian stations right now to broadcast the Watchman program. We haven't heard back from them yet, but hopefully we do. So that's basically what we're trying to do in the near future. And uh, of course, we are funding as much as we can, Bill, Kurt, and I, but of course, this organization believes in the concept of tithing and giving, and we receive tithes from people that believe in what we're doing out of their own free will, voluntarily, send tithes into us and we take those tithes and try and expand and grow the work and of course people that tithe to us we thank you for those tithes so that's uh, what our future plans are for BICOG media we are praying that Almighty God will open the door for us to give us that opportunity to have a huge presence on the internet so we can do the work of the watchman now in closing I want you to download these two booklets the Statements of Beliefs of the British Israel Church of God, and another booklet called This Is the BICOG, and it goes into the kind of the background of how I started this organization, how Kurt and Bill came into it, and what our future plans are. So download these free booklets off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends, and I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.